This Crusaders ministry is here tonight. They're going to sing with us. and I don't know what David's got on this up his sleeve, but whatever it is, we're going to praise God with it. I, I can tell you that. Amen. And it's a special blessing to see all of y'all here. They see our guest here tonight. We come to worship Jesus Christ. Amen. That's you know, we're not we're not here for a singing. We're here for praise and worship. That's right. This is church. Amen. 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 Let's go to the Lord's word of prayer and then I'll kind of introduce you a little bit. Our Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. Lord, I thank you for the safe passage that you've given my friends the Crusaders, Lord, to get here safely. And Lord, as they go out and travel through this world, Lord, and minister to lost souls, Lord, I just ask that you you give them the strength, Lord. You give them the resources. You give them the things that they stand in need of. And Lord, open the hearts of all the lost out there to come to the wonderful Jesus Christ that we know. Lord, Father, I just ask that you open our hearts tonight. Lord, let us praise and worship freely, Lord, tonight. Lord, I just thank you so much for all that you do in our lives. Lord, I thank you most of all for saving my soul. Lord Jesus Christ, I just ask that you fill this building with your Holy Spirit tonight. And Lord, let one walk out of here tonight with a burden, whether it be a burden of their heart, Lord, a burden of illness, Lord, or a burden of not knowing you as their Savior. Lord Jesus Christ, touch our hearts, fill our hearts. And I pray these things to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, most precious and holy name. Amen. 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 buddy Ashley <laughs> and we love her and her favorite color is three <laughs> how'd you know <laughs> Let every breath 
and all that I have it never cease to worship you oh, and shout to thy Lord all the earth let I see oh yes and power and majesty the Lord praise in the house tonight. All to Jesus I surrender all to Him I freely give I will Say 
want you to say this. Lord, I surrender all. Amen. Give him praise in the house. Amen. God is so awesome. Pastor, you. Said it. You better do it. Come on. doesn't mean some it means all now here's the thing about it it's easy to trust the Lord when things are going good everything's working right cars running good gas in the tank bills are kind of sort of halfway caught up got your head up kind of up where you get a little air but I want to ask you a question tonight will you trust him I want you to think about it. Are you going to trust him with everything that is within you? Back in February, we were in a, out in northwest Texas, out in Electra, Texas. And we had the, the opportunity to, to do a revival with a man that we had never met before. His name is uh, Terry Cathy. He's from Tyler, Texas. And he began to share his testimony. One night, him and his wife, his two boys and his daughter, had come back from church. He was a youth pastor. His family grew up in church, busy about serving the Lord. His daughter, at that point in time, had met a young man that had visited church. He was quite a bit older. things begin to change in her life so the dad he began to talk to his daughter and said look something's going on don't feel good about you seeing this young man and so I want you to break it off the girl became very angry and upset so she began to devise a plan to kill her family so that she could be with this man 
So one Wednesday night, they had gotten in from church. Everybody had gone to bed. He woke up to someone standing at the foot of his bed. Shots going off. Him jumping on top of his wife to protect her. He was shot 11 times. Realized his wife was dead. He began to hear his oldest son cry out, Charlie, don't do this. The next thing, there was nothing. He was trying to get out of his room to make it upstairs where his children were. When he opened the door, there was a raging fire. They had set the house on fire. So he knew he couldn't make it up the steps. He realized he said he had to do whatever he could to make it tell somebody who had done this awful thing to his family. Remember, he was shot 11 times. So he crawls out the bathroom window crawls on his hands and knees for almost 600 yards through the woods to get to the neighbor's house. The next thing that he remembers is waking up in the hospital. Thinking that all his family is gone. One of the doctors says, well, said his daughter is okay, but she's been arrested, charged with a murder. His heart breaks. He doesn't want to live. After spending many night, days in the hospital, he goes home to his sister's house. Doesn't want to live and doesn't understand why things happen the way they do. Can't even understand why his daughter, his own flesh and blood, would do such a horrific thing. After a period of time, he was ready to take his life. So he goes back to his home place where his two-story log home once stood. Standing in the heap of the ashes, he begins to see a little piece of paper flapping. And he walks over there. He'd intended to kill himself. Has a gun. And he said, I'm done with it. I'm done with all this. He picks up that piece of paper and he realizes that it's out of a book that his precious wife had been reading the night that they were murdered. he looks at that piece of paper and he begins to fall to his knees and weep and the piece of paper said I don't know why you took my family but I'll trust in you so I'll ask you this question again will you trust him it's very easy to trust him in the good things and this song talks about talks about trusting in you Lord and he says Lord I, I will trust in you with everything that is within me Listen to the message of this song. It says, I will trust in you, Lord. Sifting through the ashes of everything he had Only burned up pain and memories Was he holding in his hand And he begins to cry but the tears, they would not come The pain so deep inside him 
feeling lost and alone with his fist in the sky asking God why he bows his face and he begins to cry he said I am the way the truth That's, that's the thing. I had never, throughout the testimony of Brother Kathy, I, I couldn't even imagine. I couldn't. We think when we go through things in our life that nobody's ever been there before. We look around at our surroundings and we look around at everything that's happening in our world and we say, God, why? God, I don't understand why we're going through what we're having to go through right now. And I think back in my life and the promise that he said, he said, I have plans to prosper you and not harm you. See, sometimes when you walk through those deep valleys, it's when the strength begins to come. 
Because guess who you begin to rely on? His strength. His strength. See, when it's all good, we rely on ourselves. Hey, when that bus is running good out there, brother, and we're cruising down the interstate and everything's good, the temperature's running good, everything's good, don't have no worries, but my goodness, all of a sudden, let something, one of those gauges start going haywire, the temperature start coming up. Man, your heart begins to race. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Oh, God, what are we going to do? See, I, I remember several years back we had left Mount Pleasant, Texas and was making our way all the way to Wichita, Kansas. We had drove part of the way that night and had just got on the Indian Nation Turnpike. Man, things was going along good. We we're rolling down the road. Bus is running great. Everybody's happy. Got a decent night's sleep. We're riding, beginning to eat sandwiches for lunch as we make our way on. All of a sudden, 30 miles into the turnpike, and you know there's not a lot of exits on those turnpikes. This big explosion happens, and I realize real quick we done blew a tire. The outside duel on the passenger side blew, and immediately I whipped over because I didn't want it to tear out any airbags or anything. And I looked at my gauges to make sure our air pressure was staying up, and I, you know, so we stepped outside the bus, and you can see where the tire blew and it didn't tear up a thing. Put a couple of rubber marks on the side of the bus that you could wipe off with your hand. And, and as it began to, you know, we begin to think, uh, it's like all of a sudden that overwhelming, oh God, begins to start coming out of your mouth. What are we going to do? We've got to be in Tulsa tonight. What are we going to do? begin to get on the internet and begin to try to find out where the closest tire shop was begin to call out and make a plea found a tire shop and all of a sudden they wanted twelve hundred dollars to drive out to where we was at to put on one tire so what are we going to do we begin to ease down the shoulder McAllister Oklahoma had a tire we're 47 miles from there so we begin to limp down the shoulder 20 miles an hour. Oh God, what are we going to do? And I can remember sitting back in the driver's seat as we begin to make our way down through there. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, I don't understand. Lord, I, don't, I just don't understand because we've got to get to this place tonight to sing and to tell people about Jesus. I don't understand. Why did you let this happen? And all of a sudden, in my spirit, this voice says, I thought you said you trusted me. Boy, it's easy to trust you, Lord, when you're running 70 miles an hour and everything's running good. But 20 miles an hour with a flat. We'd gone about 20 miles and began to look, and Jonathan, he was looking in the mirror, and he says, Daddy... Looks like we was pulling the trailer at that time. Said, look like one of the tires is going down on the trailer. I said, real fine. Stopped and looked, and it, when the tire blew, the old carcass come off, and the trailer ran right over it and blew the belts in two of those tires. We kept loping down the shoulder, and I'd sit there, and I'd say, God, I don't understand. He said, I thought you said you trusted me. You stood on the platform and you stood up here and you stood behind the piano you stood behind this and you said, you need to trust in the Lord. And he says, I thought you said you trusted me. We get off the turnpike, we back our way, pulled up into the tire shop. They had one tire that size that would fit the bus. As soon as we pulled up, pulled the brake, both of those tires on the trailer were flat. So we went in, told him what we needed, because I talked to him on the phone. He said, circle around, just pull straight through. Did that, they changed the tires. Went back, and the guy says, look, I'm not going to charge you any labor. The bill was $782 for the three tires had enough money in the account to cover that 
So we're back on the work road. He called the pastor back. And I said, Pastor, we're in McAllister, Oklahoma. We're going to make it. We'll get there a little late. He said, well, we're not going to start till 7 anyway. So we got there, blew in there at about 6.15, slung up what we needed to get in, began to have service, had a wonderful service. At the end of the service, the pastor was an evangelist. He used to travel full time, traveled on faith. He said, here's what the Lord impressed upon me. He said, we need, you know what they just went through. He said, we need to bless them. The Lord said to bless them. He said, we're not going to pass the hat. If you want to bless, you're going to have to make an effort to come up here and put it in. I begin to weep just in all of what God does. He begins to remind me. He said, I thought you said you trusted me. As time went along and pastor said, uh, Brother David, take it and dump it out. Count it. Let's see what God did. I was crying so much. Tore up. Me and John couldn't even count. We finally got through it. The ticket was $782. No, it was $872. $872. Counted it out. And it was $770. I'm blown away. Just in awe of God. So we go back, the other group that was there, we went to the pastor's office for him to write the checks for the love offering that they had took up. And the guy with the other group, he said, the Lord said, take a hundred out of ours and give to them to take care of that bill. Three brand new tires. God said, will you trust me? That second verse of that song begins to go like this. Sometimes in your life the storms they will rage the dark clouds they will gather with the lightning and the rain in the midst of the darkness a voice begins to cry he said i am the way the truth and the life and i will trust him trust in you. Some things you cannot see, still I believe only in you. And I will trust Come on, give the Lord praise. Amen. Let me introduce everybody to you. And uh, uh, last time that we saw some of you folks, uh, uh, God has really put the beauty in our group. I'm just excited about that. And, um, uh, and it ain't you, son. I can promise you that. But Ashley had been traveling with us for many, for like about three years and, and uh, 
She never dreamed she'd be up here behind a microphone, singing, playing the mandolin, writing songs. And uh, God has really blessed her. And in December of this last year, she became my daughter-in-law. And would you make my daughter-in-law, Ashley Talley, welcome. Go stand by your wife, son. Right on you to move. He has stood here in the middle for many years. And, uh, and uh, I'm, yeah, yeah, we tried to move him to the outside, but uh, he wouldn't do it. But um, I'm, I'm just excited about what God is doing in his life. And, uh, you know, he, he calls it sharing. That's okay. I, I shared for many years. And then God said, uh, you've been preaching for many years. And so, but the Lord is using him mightily. And uh, I, you saw him play in the cajon. Uh, we were at this one church. And um, we were getting started with a fast song. And I had sung. And all of a sudden, Jonathan drags the cajon up and lowers his mic. And he begins to sit down and play the cajon. This man couldn't see the cajon, really. It was behind the pulpit. And uh, he said, man, that is one lazy guy to sit down and sing. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, he began to hear the drums and he began to look around the corner and found that he was playing the, the cajon. But um, I'm thankful for what God is, is doing in his life and uh, the man that he is becoming. Would you make my son, Mr. Jonathan Talley, welcome. <laughs> Back taking care of our sound and our video, he uh, has been... He's been with us. Uh, he's older than dirt now. He's uh, he is uh, he's put on thirty five pounds, Pastor. Yeah, and uh, but he is uh, he loves the Lord. Uh, he surrendered to preach last year in June. Uh, we go in and do the revivals. I I give him a night to preach, and he does a good job at that. Would you make Mr. Stephen Hayes welcome back there? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, usually, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I can't see her. She's too far back. <laughs> She's usually up really close, but um, I guess she wanted to get the perspective from a little further back tonight. But I, it is just, uh, uh, we were talking uh, the other, I guess it was the other morning, uh, we were sitting in the front of the bus, and um, I think we were, Maybe in, uh, I don't forgot even where we was at, but uh, we were sitting there across from each other and uh, we began to talk about how amazing it is what God does, about how he carries us to places and how many years that we was doing. I, I remember what it was is when she was feeling bad and uh, she thought, she got to counting up that in all the years, it's been, I don't know how many years since she had missed a service, but she was uh, really sick that uh, the night before, but uh, God allowed her to get feeling better. And uh, it's it's nothing like having a wife that loves the Lord and serves the Lord and does so much. Uh, and she doesn't get up here, uh, but she's out there. I mean, she's she's uh, putting things on Facebook about where we're going to be at, keeping people in touch, sending out emails. Uh, building posters, all this. And so uh, I'm honored that I have a wife that loves to serve. And uh, would you give my wife, Penny Tally, a hand? Just a little coffee. You're not going to? I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to sit down. This man over here, mm. Mm, I have known all of my life. Mm. He says he used to look like me, but... <clears throat> Anyways, um, he started a group about 25 years ago. He plays the piano. He plays the guitar. He plays the dobro. He plays the, what else you play? Radio. He plays the radio. And, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, um, drives the bus, and he fits us the bus, and he fits us the bus some more, and he does a wonderful job leading the group. But make welcome my dad, David Talley. Well, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus, he turned me in. Then I lived a life from heaven, feel my soul. 
Well, it don't make my heart a love And it don't roll my name above And just a little talk with Jesus That makes it right Now let us have a little talk with Jesus Let us tell him all about our trouble He will hear our pain is cry And he will answer by Talk with Jesus makes it a right. Well, now I may have doubts and fears, cause my eyes be filled with tears. Yeah. And Jesus is a friend, He watches day and night. And I go to Him in prayer. Yes, He knows my every care. Well, Makes it all right Now let us have a little talk with Jesus Let us tell him all about our trouble He will hear our faintest cry And he will answer by and by Now we need a little prayer will turn in And you know a little fire is burning You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right, and you will find the little talk that Jesus makes it right. Oh, it makes it right. Oh, it makes it right. Come on and sing, church. Talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our famous cry, and he will answer by and by. Now, when you need a little prayer, we'll turn it, and you know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus, makes it right. Amen. The Bible says that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Do you believe that tonight? I believe it with all of my heart. This song says he's right there.
thing to go Turn to the master, he'll be there for you Don't he sail by your side He's leading you through day and night Know that the Lord will be there for you
rugged cross I will ever be true it's shame and reproach gladness yes then he'll call me some that one so we're good <laughs> no I, I wanted to share a little bit of what I've been through and what God's brought me through and at the age of nine I I walked the aisle I came home one night after BBS and during BBS a bunch of my friends got saved and I looked at my dad that night and I told dad, I said, dad, I want to do what they're doing. And so he led me in a prayer like he was supposed to do. He did his job. He led me in a sinner's prayer, but I didn't do what I was supposed to do. See, I did it here, but I didn't do it here. Went through life. I was in public school till about my ninth grade year. And I didn't party. I didn't drink. I didn't do none of that, but I hung out with the ones who did and the influence that they had. and Then I had to go to public school, or pri I went to homeschool because we started traveling so much. And at the age of 16, I met Ashley, and we started dating. And while we were dating, she got saved. And not that she was a bad person, but when she got saved, there was a change that happened in her life. There was a different look in her eyes. There was a different sound in her voice. There was a change. Her walk with the Lord just shot off. I mean, it was just growing, and I was just, mine was just there. Just blah. I realized I had never had what she had. I didn't have Jesus. Had him here, but I didn't have him here. So I started doubting my salvation. I was like, well, am I saved? Yeah, I'm fine, yeah. Yeah, I've seen Southern Gospel music. Yeah, I'm fine. Am I saved? And I didn't know. I didn't know if I was saved or not. And I would put my salvation off. I'd put my salvation off. 
I was like, well, I'll just do it when we get home. That way I'm not in a church environment and I won't have people judging me and I'll just do it when we get home. Well, last year we were gone 300 days. We have done 270 times last year, but we were on the road 300 days, so we weren't home at all. We would be doing services and we'd get to the invitation and God would tell Dad that there was someone out there that's holding back, that's worried about what people were going to think about them. Him not knowing it, it was me. The one closest to the altar, the one closest to Him, the one that was supposed to be there presenting the gospel. It was me that was lost. And I knew it. But see, I was worried about what people were going to think about me. But see, I found out something. It doesn't matter what people think. It matters what He thinks. And if there's people thinking bad about you, they probably need to be down there with you. And I would put my salvation off. I would stand on stages. I stood on stages in front of hundreds of people, hundreds of churches in front of thousands of people. Told them I was saved when I knew I wasn't. Last time I seen y'all, I told you I was saved. And I knew I wasn't. I would put my salvation on because I was worried about what people were going to think about me. February the 22nd this last year, we were actually home. And Ashley, at that time, she was in college. And when she was going to college, and she had morning classes, and she came home after her classes that morning. and. Dad said we weren't fighting. We were just having an intense moment of fellowship. That's what he called it. <laughs> yeah. And she looked at me. She said, what is going on with you? What is going on with you? I said, I'm tired. She, was, she said, what do you mean you're tired? I said, I'm lost. She went, whoa. What do you mean you're lost? I said, I'm going to go to hell. She said, hold on, hold on. So she went and got mom and dad and Steve and they all came in the living room at the house. And Dad looked at me. He said, what's going on, John? I said, Dad, I'm lost. He said, what do you mean you're lost, John? He said, I led you in that prayer when you were nine. I said, Dad, you led me, but God didn't. I did it here, but I didn't do it here. See, there's a foot difference between heaven and hell. There's head knowledge and there's heart knowledge. If you just have it here, you're going to bust the hell wide open. It doesn't matter how good you are, what you've done, or who you are. See, I didn't want to let go of the talking to the girls. I didn't want to let go of the sin that Satan had me in. Dad looked at me. He said, okay, John. He said, how do you know you're lost? I told him, I said, Dad, it's like looking out the window, and I pulled the blinds back. I said, Dad, you can see those trees out there blowing, but you can't feel the wind. I said, God would be moving all around me, and I couldn't feel them. I was just there. That was February the 22nd. February the 21st, we were at a prison. I seen 40-something men get saved. People getting saved, people getting healed, people getting right. God was moving. I mean, He was moving all around me. And I was just there with the might standing. I was just there, and that was it. I wasn't feeling what they were feeling. He said, okay. He said, well, what do you want to do about it? I said, well, I want to be saved. He looked at me, he said, well, what are you waiting on? It was like he was saying, you don't have to have permission from me. And I thought to myself, I was like, nothing. Nothing had been holding me back except me. Except what I was what I was worried about what people were gonna think. I was holding myself back. See all those people that I thought were gonna think bad about me, they didn't. Nobody talked about me. People cried, people rejoiced, and some were probably even praying for me. So it doesn't matter what people think. 
doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. Last year we were able to see 605 people saved. 605 people saved because they weren't going to be worried about what people thought. And a year before, we were able to see a 97-year-old man get saved. I mean, he literally got out of his wheelchair and ran to the altar. Got out of his wheelchair and ran to the altar because he knew he needed Jesus. So it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. If you know you're lost, you need to get it right. Before, we, before I got saved, we were on our way to El Dorado, Arkansas. And it was 3 o'clock in the morning. I was in the back of the bus. and I just started driving the bus. and I was in the back of the bus playing video games, trying to stay awake because I knew if I played games, I could stay awake. And I figured if Dad needed me for just a few minutes, I could drive while he could rest or something. And I felt the bus jerk when I was in the back. And you don't feel that bus jerk like it did. I ran, ran up to the front and Dad and the other singer at that time that was with us. They were in the front and their eyes were just big. I said, what is going on? And they weren't saying nothing. And so, I got mad. I was like, well, fine. I'm going to bed. I went to bed and that morning I found out what happened. Dad was sharing with the church. And we were coming down a hill. We were going into a valley. At the bottom of the valley, there was a two-lane bridge. So wall, a lane, a lane and a wall. Went in a big bridge. Didn't have no shoulders or no divider. And just a little small bridge. And Dad hadn't seen a car in 20-something miles. And this truck was coming down the other side of the hill. And Dad knew by the way we were going and the truck was going. We were going to meet on the bridge. And didn't think nothing about it. And we got on that bridge. And that truck got on that bridge. And that truck got two feet into our lane. In front of that bus, there's no airbags. Mom was asleep, and I guess you were with us. You weren't with us. Stephen was, as, I think Stephen was asleep at that time, and in the bunk, and I was in the back. And Dad stood up and he said, "God, you got to do something." Dad said, "I seen the headlights. I seen the bumper. It missed us by that much." He said, "They didn't swerve. The truck didn't swerve at all. It went straight over like somebody picked it up and moved it." went straight over. The truck didn't even swerve like it turned. It just went straight over. I told Dad, I said, Dad, if I was to die that night, I would have went to hell because I was worried about what people were going to think about me. We were going to a church to present the gospel and I was going to put my salvation off because I was worried about what they were going to think about me. If I was to die that night, I would have busted hell wide open. Even though I had led people to the Lord, I wrote songs about Jesus, I knew about Jesus, but I didn't know Jesus. If you're doubting your salvation, don't. Don't leave here without getting it right. You don't know what, you don't know what could happen. If you're worried about what your family's going to think, don't. Because you might be the one that sees a change and accepts Jesus and they might see a change in you and accept Jesus too. If you know you're lost, don't leave here without getting it right because you don't know what could happen. You don't know what could happen. A friend of ours wrote this song. It's called, He Covered It All. And this is my testimony song. See, He covered my sins as far as the east is from the west are from us. And if you're saved tonight, He's covered your sins completely. The second verse says, Now I am living a brand new life and I'm free from all the shackles and chains in my mind and now I'm singing a brand new song of how Jesus saved me and he covered me all. see I can sing that song because February the 22nd at 11.48 a.m. I knelt down in front of our couch a good person a person who, that could present the gospel and I came up a safe person and just a, not because of me but it's because of God just being, us being able to share. And we had a little shout fit in the living room after I got saved. And Stephen got saved. 30 minutes after I did. If you be obedient tonight and you move, you might, that person might be waiting on you to move that they, so they can move. Listen to the message of the song called He Covered It All. Mm, I'm 
things I'm not proud of I'm disappointed for many And her the ones that I love Oh, pining Oh, a moment You see His grace I saw Living a brand new life Cause I'm free From all the shackles And chains of my mind And now Now I am singing Oh, I'm singing a brand new song of how Jesus saved me and you see that he he covered me You know that Jesus, He had mercy and He covered it all in church. Beauty for ashes, oh, and peace for my own. And Jesus. He had mercy, yes, he did. Oh, and Jesus, he had mercy on you. Oh, and Jesus, he had mercy. And you see that he, he covered it. thankful that he covers our sins as far as the east is from the west that's how far he cast them never to be remembered again and I'm just in awe of what our Lord does and what he continues to do I love to brag on my father I just uh, I, I can't help it and uh, I, I'm, there's so many things that uh, since we saw a lot of you uh, several years ago that has happened and just places that God has carried us to and uh, just the things that we've got to see God do 
You've heard us talk a lot tonight about faith. You've heard us talk about trusting him. And little did I know how much that meant until we stepped out in faith and started trusting the Lord 100% in our lives and in our walk and trusting him to meet all of our needs. The first of this year, we had gone to South Louisiana to do a revival in outside of Morgan City, Louisiana. And we got down there and I knew that had been having some trouble out of the bus when it was cold and I just thought, well, it's just cold. And I thought, well, going to South Louisiana, that's going to make things all better, you know, because it's going to be warm down there. Well, my goodness, this year they got ice and everything and we just happened to be right in the middle of it all. Uh, it was colder there than it was at home. And uh, so I said, well, we'll we were headed to Florida. Uh, we went down there and did some services. And I said, surely it's going to be warm in Florida. No. And it was cold there, and it even snowed uh, there this year. And so as we began to go and we began to have some trouble out of the bus, but we were making our way to Panama City, Florida. We'd just done a whole bunch of work servicing it, changing the oil, greasing it, making sure everything was ready to go. And we left out, and uh, us and another group was traveling together. They were behind us in their bus, and some of them was on our bus. And we're, we're just having a great time. And somewhere about 50 miles north of Hattiesburg, Mississippi, I looked down at the gauges, and the voltage was down like this. And I said, that's not good. And so I looked at the tachometer and it was setting on zero. And I said, well, the belts broke on the alternator. So found a place we pulled over and went back there and pulled the hood up. The belt was still on. <laughs> I said, this is not good. So I said, well, I carried a spare brush and voltage regulator in the bus with me. And I said, well, when we stop after a while in the morning, I'll change that. So... We got to Loosedale, Mississippi. Got up the next morning and we began to tear the part off the alternator. Replaced the other one after about three hours of getting three bolts loose that were rusty. And uh, put the part in there, fired it up, still the same thing. So we made our way to Panama City, got there without any trouble got ready for the service that Wednesday night and uh, I love when God plans things the Bible says his ways are not our ways and so we're there and I was telling them about the problem with the bus and the guy said well there's an alternator shop about a mile away from here so ended up had a great service that night it was a Wednesday night and I looked at the pastor I said look we don't have any place to be. We've got to sing a mile down the road at another church tomorrow night, which is a sister church of theirs. And I said, Friday and Saturday, we don't have any place to be. And he looked at me. He said, you do now. He said, we're going to have a revival. And so, like I said, I love it when God does things. So the next morning, the guy came and rode to that alternator shop. If this is not God, I don't know what is. A mile from that church was an alternator shop that had an alternator for a German bus. That's just God. And so we, we got the alternator, put it on, everything went fine. And that was kind of the beginning of, we had a great trip, everything was good. Got back and still having some transmission issues. Long story short, uh, about a month ago, we had to put a transmission in the bus, and that was $10,000. And um, we just spent $4,500 on the front end. And so God, God's amazing. He's amazing. I was telling uh, Brother Mike, the mechanic that checked the transmission, and I, and, and I love this. We'll get on the bus and get ready to leave, and we'll pray, God, make every component work according to its design and safely get us where we're going 
So the mechanic, when he plugged the computer into it and he began to read the codes that the transmission said, he said, how do you drive this thing? I said, I get in it, crank it up, let it idle for about 20 minutes and warm up good, and we go. I said, once it shifts through one time, it's, it shifts pretty good. He said, I'm asking you, how do you drive it? And I said, like this. He said, what's making it go? And I said, Jesus. And I said, why do you ask that question? He said, well, this transmission has five clutches in it and four of them are burned up. He said, it should be in limp mode. I said, Scott, yeah, it's just the Lord. It's just the Lord. And that's what he does. And he provides and he, he, he makes a way. And uh, we've had the joy and the privilege this year of seeing uh, 171 to come to know the Lord this year. And it's all about him. It's not about us. Uh, and we're, we're going after more and more and more. Wherever God says to go, that's what we're going to do. And we just want to be obedient. We want to... We want to continue to do what he's called us to do. Uh, last night, we were in Mansfield, Louisiana. We left there, uh, got to our house. Me and Stephen and Jonathan walked in the house, got some stuff, but we all slept on the bus in the parking lot beside the house. Uh, didn't, even, didn't even spend the night inside our house because uh, the air conditioning was off. It's hot. We left this morning, making our way up here. And... Uh, We'll go through Magnolia on the way to Shreveport, Louisiana, Monday night. Have to be in Shreveport on Tuesday morning. We're headed on north. We'll be singing in Branson on Saturday and Sunday. But I want to ask you to do something. Would you pray for us? Would you pray that God will place us in front of folks, put us where he wants us to be? That's our heart and our passion is to tell others about Jesus Christ. I pray that you will be obedient to do what God says to do. I know we're going to receive a love offering. I thank you in advance. I promise you that we'll put it to use. We'll put it to use to tell others about Jesus Christ. It is what, how we pay our bills and take care of our needs. You be obedient to what God tells you to do. I'm thankful in advance right now. sitting here reminiscing first time I got to see brother David and Jonathan and I don't even know where this thing was <laughs> Jonathan had just started playing drums for the Crusaders <laughs> that's been a while back at it David but you know what they've traveled this country last year they had 646 I forgot 605 people were saved this year we're at 147 am I right wow last time I thought I talked to you it was 171 souls saved people that's why we're here that's why I'm here that's why I stand before you day after day that's why you talk to your friends day after day that's why you're supposed to be living the life according to God of the gospel. But it's a blessing. It's a blessing to me when Brother David says, I'm coming through. You want us to stop and fellowship with you? But let me tell you something. Last I checked, it was a little over $900 to fill that, uh, that bus up with fuel. It don't, go with, it don't get 25, 30 miles a gallon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were talking about Jesus pushing the bus. There you go. <laughs> $900 for a tank of fuel. You've heard uh, Brother David talk about the repairs and stuff. If it's in your heart tonight, Brother Quentin, Brother Bryce, would you come up here? going to come around and this is a love offering if it's in your heart to help the crusaders ministry to keep traveling keep being able to drive their bus by here and see us from time to time give what you can first of all 
I don't believe we should ever partake in anything like this without a word of prayer. What do you think, Brother David? Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Lord Father, Lord, I come to you tonight, Lord, and I thank you for the Crusaders' ministries. Lord, I thank you for each and every soul that you've brought out here tonight, Lord, to hear the word and song, Lord, and hear the word spoken. Lord Jesus Christ, I just ask that you bless them. And Lord, whatever you see fit for them to receive, Lord, I'll ask that you bless each dollar for its, for its intended use, Lord, to see your work get spread. Lord, I thank you and I praise you right now for the kindness and the mercies that you've given us. And Lord, I just ask that you help us to give those mercies to others. And I pray these things in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen.
My deep despair. I remember all what the Lord said when He calmed that troubled sea. And I know once more how He sees a storm and He plants over me. Oh, and God sees a storm. From the other side, well, and he knows how lessons learned, and just beyond the clouds, he sees where skies. Oh, and he speaks peace to the raging storm, but peace cannot be found. 
He already sees the rainbow when we see only clouds. Oh, but when the storms of life come crashing in and trouble me, I can feel His arms around me. And He whispers, let it be, let it be, oh, God sees the storm from the other side, well, and He knows the lessons learned, and just beyond the clouds He sees where Signs. Oh, and he speaks peace to the raging storm, but peace cannot be found. He already sees a rainbow when we see only clouds. He already sees a rainbow when we the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Amen. I just wanted to share this with you. I know the hour's getting late, and um, but I, <laughs> yeah. I guess really since I met Brother Mike the first time, we were out at Morning Star. wasn't by chance wasn't by coincidence God puts people in your life for a purpose sometimes we don't truly understand a lot of it but I, but I think back to this over in the book of Luke I love the passage of scripture that talks about Jairus the ruler of the synagogue the Bible says that he had a daughter that was 12 years old that was sick unto death. And that daddy, he went to the ultimate source. He knew where the power was at. And so he went to Jesus. And as Jesus moved, wherever he went, there was a multitude. Unless he had withdrew himself back to pray and to seek his father's face. There was always a multitude. And so as this dad had petitioned Jesus to come and to heal his daughter, to come to his house and to heal his daughter, the Bible says that there was a great multitude that had enthroned him and was around him. The disciples were there as well. And throughout this portion, I'm sure, of Jesus' ministry, many times there had been people that wanted to get up to Jesus. Some of them just wanted to see the show. Some of them were going to him because of the fact that they knew that he could heal them. And many of these people would holler and, and there would be talking going on all the time and the disciples are asking him questions. Master, what is it that you want us to do? What do we need to do with these people, Master? Uh, and here's this dad that has made his way and has petitioned Jesus Christ. And he's making his way. In our lives today, so many times we petition Jesus Christ over and over and over and we think he has forgotten about us. I want to help you right here. When you petition him and you go to him in faith and you ask him, I need you. I trust you. And I believe that you can meet the need he doesn't forget about you his timing is impeccable it's right on time 
I mean, it's to the second. It's never late. It's right on time. All of a sudden on the scene comes this woman that has pushed her way through the crowd. And I'm sure that this dad, all of a sudden, there's a ruckus going on. Jesus has stopped. There, the people are all around and there's noise that's going on. And this dad's heart is breaking at this point in time. He is a ruler of the synagogue, a preacher. But Jesus, I petition you to come to my house. Don't stop here. My daughter is dying. She may already be even dead at this point in time. His dad's heart is sinking. Jesus is right on time. This woman has pressed through the crowd. It's took everything that she's had because she had, the Bible said, an issue of blood. And my friend, in that point in time in your life, in that era of time, you did not get out of your house if there was a blood issue because you were considered unclean. You were considered unclean. So this woman is breaking every tradition, every law by stepping out to get to Jesus. Two things are happening at this very moment, this very point in time. This father, this dad is wanting Jesus to get to his house. This woman is wanting to get to the hem of Jesus' garment. She said, I know I can press through. If I'll just push through the crowd. Oh, if I can just get to him, he's coming by. He's coming by. We need to take a look at these two examples right here. These are not stories, folks. This is the gospel. This is what happened. The Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We sell him out short today. We think he's forgotten about us. Lord, you've forgotten about me. Lord, Understand. All this ruckus has happened, and all of a sudden, this woman has reached out and touched the hem of Jesus' garment, has pushed through the crowd, and all of a sudden, the Bible says that Jesus felt the virtue leave out of him. And he turns to his disciples and says, Who touched me? Boy, I love that. He knew. And the disciples. They run stir crazy. Master, you ask us who touched you. This crowd has enthroned you and you ask us who touched you. These people are everywhere. And this woman falls to her knees trembling. He said, "Is I. He said, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you whole. Whew. Be of good cheer. Oh, but here's a dad sitting over here. All of a sudden, these people are clapping and they're saying, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. This dad's heart sinking. His daughter, his daughter could even be dead at this point in time. And it's, he's trying to be happy, I'm sure, inside seeing that this woman has been made whole. You read a little further. Jesus makes his way into Jairus' house. Oh, they done told him, said, don't trouble the master, your daughter's dead. <laughs> Jesus says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. He makes his way to the house and forgot about you he hadn't forgot about you I don't care you may say well I'm too young for Jesus to even know who I am he says this much right here he knows the hair on your head and if he'll feed the sparrows don't you think you're more important than them he hadn't forgot about you he hadn't forgot about you so I, I said this to tell you in the joy of seeing God move in somebody else's life, in the joy of seeing all of a sudden God heals somebody, God touches somebody, 
a person goes through a, a, a low valley and they come out of it shouting it out and telling people what God has done in their life and you're still over here and you're sitting there and you're saying Lord you forgot about me Lord you forgot about me he hadn't forgot you he hadn't forgot about you his timing is impeccable sometimes we just we have to say Lord I'll trust you I'll trust you as the doctor has walked in and pronounced the C word over your life Jesus I'll trust you when my spouse has walked out the door for someone else Jesus I'm going to trust you when my son or my daughter has gone in a direction that's so far from God I'm going to trust you I'm going to trust you when you get to work and you've been faithful for 20 some odd years you've been there when nobody else was and you walked in and the boss says there's been a change we don't need you no more I need you to clean out your locker no buts that's the way it is I trust you I'll trust you you say well brother David I don't have that kind of faith well why not Jesus is the same yesterday today and forever he died for all well but you know, you go out and you do this 365 days a year. You're supposed to have that kind of faith. Well, guess what? You are too. You are too. You're to trust Him. See, here is a problem today that I believe that we encounter. People come to church. They love to come to church. And they enjoy coming to church. And they say, I just don't have the faith that sister so-and-so has. I don't have that faith that brother so-and-so has. Maybe you need to examine your life. Maybe you need to be like Jonathan. Maybe you need to quit running from Jesus. If attending church would have saved you, he'd have been saved a long time ago. At the age of 20, he's attended more churches right now at the age of 20 than most people attend in a lifetime. At the age of 20. If writing songs about Jesus Christ would save you, you'd have been saved. Hey, if kneeling and leading people to the Lord would save him, he would have been saved. But it's a personal relationship it's between you and God. It's between you and God. It's not something that your mama did for you, your daddy did for you, your grandmother, your grandfather. It's something that you've got to do. It's something that you've got to do. In both of these instances, in the book of Luke, the daddy had to do something. The woman with the issue of blood had to do something. She had to press through to Jesus. Oh, my friend. I'm telling you, when Jesus comes into your life, there is a change that happens. There is a change that happens. If in your life you can go back and you can say, I look the same as I did before I got saved, something's wrong. I heard this down in South Louisiana. An old black preacher said, if you is what you was, then you ain't. See, you may have been coming to this church ever since the doors got open. But coming to church won't save you. Jesus Christ will. He'll save you. He died for you. He died for you. When he was hanging there on that cross, going through that pain and that agony, you and I don't even know about. And he said, Father, forgive David because he doesn't know what he's done. Father, forgive Mary because she doesn't know what she's done. Father, forgive John. He doesn't know what he's done. And you can put your name right there. In 
And when he cried out, it is finished. I mean, it took care of it all. So all you have to do is accept a free gift. Realizing that Jesus died, he rose again on the third day. And that right now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and I, waiting on you. If you're here tonight and you've never met Jesus, you've never had a personal encounter. I don't care about your age. I don't care about your last name, your first name, your status, what you drive, where you live. What I want to know is do you know Jesus personally in your life? Have you met him? Has there been a life-changing experience in your life? I'm not talking about an emotional thing. I'm talking about a life-changing. I'm talking about where you invited Jesus to come into your life. You asked him to forgive you of your sins. And you said, Jesus, I believe that you died and you rose again. And right now, would you forgive me of my sins and save me? That's what I'm asking you. So right now, at this very moment in time, you're not here by chance. Don't, don't listen. Don't listen to Satan right now and say, it's Wednesday night. They got a singing group there. Wait till Sunday. You heard Jonathan share that. He said that over and over and over. He said, I'll wait till we get home. What if this is the last mile? You will go into eternity, I promise you. If you go in without Jesus, you're bound for a devil's hell. No, no doubt about it. But once you meet him as your Lord and your Savior, Jesus Christ, and you ask him to come into your life and to forgive you of your sins, oh, my friend, heaven is awaiting. All eternity. All eternity. So I'm going to ask you right now, right there where you're at, you and God, you examine your life. Look into the depth of your life right now and see where you're at. Do you know him? Have you ever met him personally? Oh, yeah, I know his name, but does he know yours? Is your name in the Lamb's Book of Life? Right there where you're at. I want you bow your heads right there you and God right now if you were to leave this life where would you go right now doesn't it need to be a think so maybe so I hope so it needs to be I know so where I will spend eternity I want you to understand something. Me standing up here saying a prayer, it ain't going to save you. It's you praying. You praying in faith, the Bible said. It's prayer of faith. And right now, you know who you are. You know without a doubt. Because the Holy Spirit has been knocking on your door since the beginning of this service. Even before you even got here. It's like Jonathan said. He knew for a long time that he was running from God. He's running from Jesus. So right now, right there where you're at, I'd be honored to lead you in a prayer, but I want you to understand this. You have got to pray and believe in your heart. Pray in faith. You asking the Lord to come into your life and to forgive you of your sins. If that's you right now, why don't you pray with me? Right there where you're at. He can hear a whisper all the way to heaven because he's listening to your heart. If that's you, would you pray with me? Dear Lord Jesus. I know that I'm a sinner. And Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and you rose again. And right now, you're in heaven. Lord Jesus, I'm lost. And I need you. Would you come into my life and forgive me of my sins and save me? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. Now I want to live the rest of my life 
serving you. I know your heads bowed, all seriousness right now. If you prayed that prayer and you meant business and you asked the Lord to save you tonight, I'm just going to ask you to get up out of your pew and make your way over here to Brother Mike. We're going to rejoice and we're going to pray. We're just going to get excited about what God's going to do. If that's you, would you come on right now? Would you come on right now? Come on right now. Serious about it. You're serious about it. What about it, adults? Come on. What about it? Are you serious? Are you really serious? He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. He said, I died for you, and I love you. And I want you to be with me and spend eternity. But you, you have to accept. You have to ask me. You have to ask me. You have to ask me. Father, right now, I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. God, I, I am in all of you, Lord. I am so in all of you. Lord, I pray that you'd continue to move in this invitation time, Father. And you would have your way, Lord. And Lord, if there's one here that's hurting, that's going through something in their life, Lord, I, I want them to understand that you have not forgot about them. And Lord, that you are there. They will just reach out and touch you. Now, Father... Have your way. This is your time. In Jesus' name. Would you stand? If you need to come, these altars are still open. There's plenty of room. There's plenty of room in these altars. You need to come and pray. You come. May God is dealing with you about something. Man, come on, there's no better place to do than to come do business in the altar. Uh, the altar will alter a family, folks. It'll make a change in your life. Maybe there's something in your life. I'd be honored to pray with you about it. I'd be honored to do whatever God has placed upon your heart. Don't leave here carrying a load of burdens. We fall down. We lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of your mercy and love at the feet of Jesus we cry holy 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 we At the feet, oh, at the feet of Jesus, the greatness of your mercy and love. At the feet of Jesus, no better place. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We. is still speaking I believe he's still speaking to some people right now right now maybe there's something in your life 
Don't miss the opportunity. Yes, Jesus. You know, I believe tonight that there, there's people still holding back. See, you're worried about what people are going to think about you. See, you think it's hard getting out of your pew and come to the altar and knowing your loss? It was hard for me knowing me being up here on stage, knowing that I was lost and having to do something. But once I let go and let God, everything was better. You can wear a cross around your neck. You can... You can know the verses. You can know everything. But if you don't know Jesus personally, you're going to bust hell wide open. Yes. So please, be obedient tonight and move. We fall down. We lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of your mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. Lord, The greatness of your mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. Cause we cry, holy, holy, holy. Sing it, church. We cry, holy, holy, holy. The 
love Brother David and Jonathan and Ashley and Sister Penny and Stephen. They've been my friends for several years. And I know that they do a wonderful work when they come through town. But it's your job and my job to see our friends and our neighbors saved from a burning hell. It's our job. I'm glad to have friends like these. I'm going to tell you, it's nice for me to be ministered to. Brother David, ain't it right? There's a lot of times we just need to be ministered to ourselves. But I'm going to, guys, just think about this right here. If the only souls that are going to be saved, if the only lives that are going to be changed is when the crusaders come through town, we're not a church. Uh, come on now. We're not Christians, and we're not doing our job. I look back at a month ago, I mean a year ago, this month. We had a group of people over at my house visiting over whether or not we were going to start a church. I had already told these people, Brother Jim, you can back me up on this, I am never preaching again. I was done. Because you see, I don't like church games. I don't believe in church games. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe in what the Word of God and my Holy Bible says. And I don't believe about all the people's traditions and ideas and things that they put in their amongst them. And that's what we base this faith off of is the Word of God. It's not what my grandma did. It ain't what my granddaddy said was right. It's what that Bible says. Ain't it right, Sister Gail? That's what we're standing on. And it's the Word of God that saw one, two, three souls saved, four souls saved tonight. Praise the Lord. Four souls saved tonight. One day, one rededication. But it's the Word of God that does that. It's truth that does that. And when these kids and young and adults that come here tonight, when they go home, they don't have to play the games that Sister Terry and I played. Well, they told me I was saved when I was eight or nine years old, and I don't really know if I'm saved. People, I'm gonna tell you right now: if you're saved, you know it. Amen. It ain't no doubt in your heart whether or not I am saved. I know I am saved. I know that right now, if fire, if fire come from heaven, that Jesus would take me back with him. You know, it was, it was a blessing for me to witness to my wife. It was a shock to me to see her push me out of the way and head down the aisle to be saved. But it was an honor for me to get to baptize her. I got a question for you then. Your brother David asking me a question, I can ask you one. Are y'all busy tomorrow night? Brother David said they don't have any place to be tomorrow night. Do you think we can do this again? Do you think we can still have the same power? Do you think you can bring a friend? That, that, to me, that's what's important. Do you think you can bring a friend? Do you think we can fill this house? Hey. You know the song just one more time. Now there's a story right there. We were sitting in the church last night, just yesterday afternoon, singing through some things. And this song came to mind during the, the, the Bible conference. And I looked at Penny, and she said, where did this song come from? And I, I said, we've sung this a long time ago. Yeah, we can do that. 
Well, let's do it. Let's do it uh, to close. Just, just as uh, as a worship to close. Okay. Is, is that good with you? Yeah. All right, guys. This is what I want to do tonight. TJ, Quentin, y'all come here. Gail, you come up here. These have lived in some confusion, but tonight they spoke to Jesus Christ. They said, Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to be my Savior. Yeah. They've given their life to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. You see, I don't mind getting back in the water. Well, I don't mind y'all splashing my shoes. <laughs> hey, if we want to, we go to the river. I'm not scared of it. <laughs> I'm not scared. This is what I want you to do. Hang on a second. These four right here have give their lives tonight to Jesus Christ. They were saved. Cassie? Cassie's come and says she needs to feel the power of God in her life. She needs to feel, feel his power around her. She's rededicating herself. Amen. Yeah. Brother Dave, if y'all can play anything to march with, I'd like for these people to come by and give them a hand of Christian fellowship. Okay. Just anything you want to play. All right. We got one. Can you have your microphone back? As she slams in, trying to fade into the faces, the girl's teasing laughter is carrying her farther than they know, farther than they know. And if we are the body, why aren't his arms reaching? Why aren't his hands healing? Why aren't his words teaching? And if we aren't a body, why aren't his feet going? Why is his love not showing? Then there is a way. There is a way. A traveler is a far away from home. He sends his call and quiets his lips into the back row. The weight of their judgmental glances tells to him that his chances are better out on the road. And if we are the body, why? Are arms reaching why aren't his hands healing why aren't his words teaching and if we are the body why aren't his feet going why is his love not showing then there is a way Jesus paid about to for us to pick and choose who should come We are the body of Christ So if we are the body Why aren't His arms reaching? Why aren't His hands healing? Why aren't His words teaching? And if we are the body Why aren't His feet going? Why is his love not showing? Then there is a way. Jesus is a way.
starts high The church has me knowing Is a losing fire Some, Some are determined For bearing alone We must be determined To keep pressing on Cause it's just a one more soul It won't be worth every struggle. It won't be worth every mile. A lifetime of labor is still worth the all if it rescues just one more soul. It's good. It's him just one more soul Where to walk down the aisle It will be worth every struggle It will be worth every mile a lifetime of labor is still worth it all if it rescues just a one more soul. So preachers, keep preaching. Let Jesus see and the layman keep sharing that Jesus the angels have gathered They're surrounding the throne And they'll start rejoicing For just one more soul Cause it just one more soul Were to walk down the aisle It will be worth it be worth every mile. Well, a lifetime of labor is still worth it all if it rescues just one more soul. If it rescues just one more soul. hope you enjoyed that service and if God spoke to you during that service and you've realized that you need a savior and that you're lost and undone and why don't you call out to the Lord he's just waiting to hear from you he already knows and you know as well as anybody if the Holy Spirit is drawing you and right where you're at you can call upon him see God can hear a whisper all the way to heaven from right where you're at because he sees your heart. Why don't you ask him to come in and be your Lord and Savior. To forgive you of your sins. He's waiting on you. But it's something that you have to do. If you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart. Then you don't have a personal relationship. But that's what it takes. That's what it takes to know Jesus Christ. As a personal relationship. So if that's you and you, you would like to receive Jesus into your heart and start this relationship, I'd ask you to pray with me. But pray in faith, believing that he'll save you. And he says he'll do just that. So why don't you pray with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I know that you died for me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and you rose again, and right now you're in heaven. Lord Jesus, I'm lost, 
and I need you to save me. Forgive me of my sins and come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. Now I want to live the rest of my life serving you. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer in faith and asked the Lord to save you, I want to be the first to tell you that you're saved and that you're on your way to heaven if you prayed that prayer in faith and believed and asked God. We'd like to hear from you. You can contact us at thecrusaders-ministries.com. You can find us on Facebook. Send us a message or give me a call, 870-904-3118. We'd like to find out where you're at and get you involved in a local church, try to help you start your walk with Jesus Christ in a positive way. But we're excited what God has done. And we look forward to hearing from you. And if you'd like to partner with the Crusaders, you can become uh, a seed partner by sowing a seed and meeting a need. We're a 501c3. We're a nonprofit organization. You can go to our website, thecrusaders-ministries.com, and you can give safe and secure there. You can give a one-time tax-deductible donation, or you can set it up to do monthly and it can just come straight out of your account. Whatever it is that God has placed upon your heart, I pray you'd be faithful to do that. And of course, if you have any questions or concerns, you can contact me, David, at 870-904-3118. Thank you again for watching this service, and I pray it was a blessing to you. And God bless you.